So I'm excited to talk to you about shoulder pain today. It's one of the more common things I see in my practice. And the interesting thing about shoulder pain is it really requires a good physical examination. So we're going to be discussing the epidemiology and differential diagnosis of common causes of shoulder pain today. But we'll also spend a lot of time on physical exam and then therapeutics as well. Let's get underway and let's start with a case. I've got a 50-year-old right-handed woman. She reports a four-week history of right shoulder pain. She works as a house cleaner and her shoulder feels worse after work. A little bit more history. She feels the shoulder has grown stiff in the past week. And she tried acetaminophen and ibuprofen for her pain and they had a modest effect. This isn't that atypical a history. Right away, notice a few things though in the history. Um, whenever you're talking about a unilateral symptom uh, in the upper extremities, always include whether the patient's right or left hand. That's going to tell me something. So maybe um, in my patients and working as a house cleaner, she's vacuuming a lot or doing a lot of repetitive motion um, with that right arm because it's her dominant arm. So always include uh, her handedness as part of the uh, history of present illness. It's worse after work. Um, so that's not surprising. There's a lot of inflammatory conditions uh, that can be. And then now her, her shoulder is growing stiff. Is that because it hurts so much or is it because she inherently is lacking uh, range of motion of the joint? And then it's important to know she's already tried acetaminophen and ibuprofen too, obviously. That's going to inform us as we think about therapeutics for her. So some things we want to know about that are elucidated in this case, what is the duration of pain? How long has it been going on? Was there an inciting event such as a trauma? Uh, it's going to be very different if you were tackled playing football uh, versus uh, you've noticed the pain slowly developing over the course of a month uh, cleaning houses. The degree of disability. Anytime we talk about musculoskeletal pain and really any type of pain, should include an assessment for how disabled the patient is as well. It's not just about treating the pain. If this is interfering with her ability to do her job, that interferes with her livelihood, so that can become a lot more serious than just pain alone. Other joint pain. You know, shoulder pain in combination with other forms of pain could indicate uh, some rare rheumatologic condition, um, even more rarely some type of infection, but uh, if it's just sticking to her shoulder, you can be pretty sure it's probably related in this case uh, to her overuse at work. And then as I mentioned, it can be hard to elucidate just on history alone what is pain and what is uh, truly immobility of the arm because patients will use their upper extremity less um, as the pain increases, which increases the sensation that they're not moving it as much. So what are the major causes of shoulder pain to consider? The major causes in my practice and, and all primary care include rotator cuff tendonitis, adhesive capsulitis, acromioclavicular joint disease, biceps tendonitis, and glenohumeral arthritis or instability. Those are the six the most common causes. They account for the vast majority of cases in my practice. <music>